A 60-day extension for the state of emergency comes into force on May 1st, with the motion being tabled during a special sitting of Parliament on Monday morning. The meeting of the House of Representatives was rather unusual, as the floor was reduced to a total of seven elected officials. Gone were supporters of both political parties who, up until then, had remained fixtures in the galleries. The order of the day was the introduction of a single motion. Madam Speaker, I move whereas Section 18.2 of the Belize Constitution provides that the Governor General may, by proclamation, which shall be published in the Gazette, declare that a state of public emergency exists for the purposes of Part 2 of the Constitution. And whereas Section 18.3 of the Belize Constitution provides that, in order to have effect, the proclamation must contain a declaration of the Governor General that he is satisfied that a public emergency has arisen as a result of the outbreak of inter alia infectious disease. And that highly contagious disease is the new coronavirus 2019, which, despite relatively low numbers of infection in Belize, continues to wreak havoc on the local economy. The motion to extend the SOE, however, was met with resistance by the opposition, who maintains that relief during the present state of emergency was slow to come, making an additional 60 days extremely difficult for most households. A lot of people had a rough Easter, you know. They got the money. Take one while to reach even for the 28,000. In fact, going into Easter, nobody will get it. And just get a good word that it was approved. Man, even though we can't go nowhere, we can't go to Placencia or Chetomal or Kikaka, Easter wired in a way. So for that four or five days, we want, we want to eat with cross crossbun. We want to eat, we want a good Easter Sunday dinner. Wow. Wow. Feel like we. But that money not reach, Madam Speaker. In identifying the challenges that residents in the rural communities continue to face, Cayo South Area Representative Julius Espat pointed to the hardships of his constituents getting food to their respective villages. The poor rural residents are trying their best. But it is not enough. The food is not reaching. And if I am complaining and our villages are close to Belmopan, imagine. Some of them are farmers, not all of them are farmers. But, but you see how they think, Madam Speaker? The villagers, the farmers, so no worry about them. Now, yes, we have an advantage. That the rural people are proud people, and for the longest, in fact, from history, they have had the knowledge, the common sense, and the opportunity to be able to feed themselves. So that's a great advantage during this crisis. Second advantage is that we are not living as close to each other as maybe the residents of the urban areas. PM Barrow, in wrapping up the meeting, explained that there is no need for citizens to become frantic over another SOE coming into effect. The member for Lekai was absolutely right when he said people should not cringe at the thought of a further lockdown. No, they should not, because the continuation of the state of emergency for two, men, for, for two months does not mean that they will necessarily be locked down for two months. Two things. The Constitution makes clear, and the recital, part of the recitals to the motion makes clear that you can come back to Parliament at any time and by way of a simple resolution, you can bring an end to the state of emergency. But more than that, the state of emergency, the extension of the state of emergency, the original proclamation by the Governor General, these things are enabling measures. The proclamation enables a state of emergency, but what is critical is the regulations passed under the state of emergency. Those regulations will be spelled out on Thursday during another episode of Ask the Experts. Reporting for News 5, I am Isanika Etano.